Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and when it comes to video games, it's not that uncommon for players to take up the mantle of the forces of good and work together, or indeed strike out alone, in order to take down whatever horrible evil is plaguing the land. However, as the industry has progressed, player choice has become something valued more and more. Yet some games take this even further by not just rewarding evil choices, but actively punishing those that try to walk the path of good. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games that punished you for being good. Number eight, Papers, Please. Papers, Please is one of the only video games that I can think of that manages to get over a sense of pure intimidation in its title alone. That singular comma between the two words tells you everything about this game before you've even played it. It's authoritative, restrictive, and altogether exasperated. See, you play as a glorious member of Arstotzka, working as an immigration inspection officer at the border of your country. Now, a ceasefire has recently been announced between your homeland and its neighbor, but political tension is still at an all-time high. Therefore, you need to examine and cross-check those looking to move from one country to the other to limit events escalating once more. However, it's not as simple as things might first appear, as while people show up without the proper documentation or with things that were completely correct yesterday, new rules have rendered their application obsolete. And as they spin you a sob story about how they want to see their family, Papers, Please becomes a battle between your moral compass and the big brother state in which you live. And of course, bending the rules to let people through results in severe punishment, not just for you, but for your family as well. By being fined, you won't be able to afford heating or medicine for your family, and thus it becomes a pretty harsh experience of ignoring what is right to do what you are told is right. Number 7. Disco Elysium it turns out that playing a colossal loser in a video game is just as hard as it is to live out this bad hand in real life. And Disco Elysium, while being one of the most beautifully animated and indeed written games in recent memory, instills one very clear message in you. Trying to do the right thing is sometimes the wrong thing. Waking up to find his memory obliterated by excessive alcoholism, Detective Harry must piece together not only a murder case, but also his own fractured psyche. It's an immersive title, but it's one that's very clear to teach you that what you think you know is not going to fly in this foreign land. Treating people with respect and kindness sometimes leads to them taking advantage, refusing to give up information now that you've shown that you're desperate and have a need to please. Pushing hard with the fact that you're a police officer looking for justice to try and do the right thing will actually see the world grow colder as you're just now another pig to the locals. The idea of what even makes a good person is an ever-circling question, and come the end of Disco Elysium's pulling narrative, you'll have left a ton of questionable decisions and indeed regrettable actions in your wake, and all of these were born from you trying to play things pure. Number 6. Pathologic Pathologic is a brutally strange game, one that seems intent on keeping the player at arm's length but then occasionally wrapping their own arm around them and then guiding them backstage for a tour of the fourth wall breaks that will obliterate your mind exhibit and then booting you out of the fire escape and calling the police on you. Therefore, is it any surprise that concepts like morality are but playthings to Pathologic? Throughout the game, depending on which character you play as, you'll be presented with situations in which you must make decisions that either benefit your character, the people of the playground town around you, or you directly the person. However, before you try to untangle which is which, let me give you a tip. Every single choice will result in suffering. Even when you're trying to be good, like selling your possessions to raise enough money to buy food for the sick, you'll arrive at the hospital to find that everyone is either dead or dying, only to have your food surplus then taken off you and a meager reward handed back, meaning that you failed to save anyone and are now starving to death. Elsewhere, you can pay huge sums of cash to free people who have been wrongly imprisoned, thinking that maybe by doing so these people will help you out later on in the game. But not a chance, mate. They walk off without even saying thanks, and now you're poor, and starving, and now likely have the plague. Seriously, in a worrying sense, this game actively teaches you to save yourself and no one else. Number 5. Silent Hill 3 
One of the most distinguishing features of Silent Hill that sets it apart from the likes of other survival horror titles is that they are, at their core, tales of morality. They speak of the pains of the human condition and what one would be prepared to put themselves through when confronted by guilt and regret. And as such, a lot of the titles actually operate on a pseudo-morality system when it comes to determining which ending the player is going to get. If you refuse to kill creatures or spend time comforting other NPCs in the game, then it will track this. And inversely, if the player ignores their own low health or attacks wantonly, then this too will play into the endings. Silent Hill 3, however, features a moment that actively punishes you for doing what is on every conceivable level a good thing. You see, partway through the game, Heather encounters a woman who is weeping and alone in a confessional booth. As you sit and listen to the tale of how her child was murdered and so took revenge on the murderer and killed them, she then asks Heather for forgiveness. Now, at this point, your empathy bone is probably close to breaking because, of course, you want to offer her support and forgiveness for a crime that she clearly committed out of grief and a misaligned sense of justice. Yet, doing this actually nets you negative karma and could lock you out of the good ending of the game. You're actively punished for trying to help someone. Is it because we've not been ordained, or is it because in this game, and this is actually very likely, you're being told that only God can forgive? Which, if this is the case, is actually brilliant in the context of the main game, but still it's utterly harsh to the player. Number 4. Fable 3 In what might be Peter Molyneux's crowning achievement, Fable 3 features a shock twist that will leave you both reeling and quite possibly in stitches. And it all comes at the precise moment that you confront your brother, the evil King of Albion, in an attempt to overthrow him. You see, Logan here, he's not exactly been a great king as of late, taxing the ever-loving crap out of his people and expelling or executing his subjects in, in order to maintain a state controlled by fear. Therefore, it is up to you to right the wrongs of the land and stage a coup against him, which seems to have worked a treat come the mid-game, only things to completely fall down around your ears. You see, Logan was being an absolute dick in an effort to save his people from a massive terror known as the Crawler, and was taxing people into poverty to raise funds for defenses against this threat. And now, that's your job. Suddenly, all of your promises of a better tomorrow for the people are thrown under the bloody bus, as now you need to tax even more than before in order to raise the required amount. You're then presented with a ton of decisions to make, many of which allow you to show benevolence, but your kingdom isn't going to be so happy when it's a smouldering wreck. Therefore, the game actively pushes you towards being more evil in order to see out this oncoming threat. Number 3. Dragon Age Origins as with many Bioware games, Dragon Age Origins posits you in the rather large shoes of a character thrust into the deepest of deep ends, and basically waves a thumb over to this monolithic tower marked Big Evil and says, go on then mate, have a crack at that. It's a daunting task to save the world from annihilation, and therefore you better make sure that you and your party are as best equipped as possible. Yet, before you start rolling up your sleeves to pitch in with the locals to earn their love and respect, you might want to instead give them a wedgie and mess their hair up because you know what? This game pays far greater rewards for being a bully. As there's no karma meter or morality system to worry about in this game, you can intimidate and act like a jerk as much as you want, as pretty much every option to do so offers far greater rewards than by being nice and friendly. I mean, sure, your companions might have a few snide words, but that's only if you're running with the pure and pious pals. Plus, if it's really bothering you, spend a few pennies of your ill-gotten gains on some trinkets and they'll fall in love with you all over again. Dragon Age origins, teaching us to bully others for rewards and then get our friends to love us again through materialistic manipulation. Excellent. Number 2. The Banner Saga do you like having every single choice you make result in the suffering of those looking up to you? Well, if you do, weird flex but okay, then you are going to absolutely love the Banner Saga because it is crushing bleakness on a plate. Your goal in this game is to simply survive, something which is made incredibly difficult thanks to a winter that literally never ends, pitiful resources, and a monstrous throng of ironclad warriors known as the Dredge, who are looking to kill everything with a bloody pulse. Yet, it's not just in the heat of 
of battle where your resolve is going to be tested, as when journeying from region to region, you'll be met with some pretty hard choices to make. A group of starving bandits might try and hold up the caravan, and while you might be tempted to offer them food and shelter in exchange for their fighting skills, this will see you lose more resources when they rob you blind after exploiting your good nature. Elsewhere, playing nice with people who refuse to leave their homes despite showing them the power of the dredge will result in you leaving them to die and letting them keep the rations that your group desperately needs. It takes a hard hand to hold the reins of such a big group, and no matter how much you try to show benevolence, it's often the worst decision for all involved, meaning that you have to lead with a heart as cold as winter itself. And number one, Shadowrun Dragonfall. Ah yes, Shadowrun Dragonfall, the expansion so good that it got its own standalone release. Seriously, that does not happen often, so it speaks to the sheer quality on offer in this squad-based cyberpunk RPG. From its meticulous dialogue system to its utterly engrossing narrative about a group of deckers becoming embroiled in a conspiracy so thick you could use it to hold your house together, Dragonfall is immersive on every level. It's also a game that punishes you relentlessly for trying to bring a positive moral perspective to the table. Throughout the title, you're tasked with raising funds in order to stave off the Firewing, a shady organization looking to hunt you down, and so you have to take on missions in the form of contracts in order to secure some capital. Now, these jobs are anything but pleasant, usually involving death, deceit, and a whole dose of action, and at certain points, you'll have your moral compass called into question. Do you want to let a poor soul walk free because they can't afford to pay back loan sharks, or spare the life of a person in the wrong place at the wrong time? Well, if you do, well, say goodbye to some of the better rewards in this game. Dragonfall teaches you that this is a job. It is not a nice one, but you need to adhere to what the client wants. Anything less than that, and it's a mark on your reputation and a kick in your bank account. Utterly brutal, right? And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that punished you for being good. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C over on Twitch, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We looked today at video games that punished you for being good, but I can assure you that that is no way to live your life in the real world. Go out there with love in your hearts instead of hate. Build bridges instead of burning them, because that love, happiness, and success that I'm always wishing for you, that comes about so much quicker if you start building relationships with other people and treating them with respect as well. Now go out there and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.